Hi, this is Wes Fryer, and in this screencast I'd like to show how you can download the enhanced EPUB version for iPad of my book, Playing With Media, Simple Ideas for Powerful Sharing. You're going to want to navigate to my blog, which is speedofcreativity.org, and you can do that by simply Googling my name and clicking the first link, which is generally my blog, that shows up at the top. And on any page of my blog, you're going to want to click on the Publications link, and there's now a drop-down, and you'll see eBooks, and then a link that says Help with eBooks. This is the page Help with eBooks, and this includes assistance with your uh, eBook, whether you're trying to get it, get it onto an iPad, Kindle, Nook, or other kind of e-reader. And for this demonstration, I'm going to be uh, showing these steps that are described for iPad 2 and newer users. If you're a user of an iPad 1, you're probably going to want to download this directly to your computer and then synchronize your eBook using the iTunes application. Once you click the link to purchase the book, you're going to, at the very bottom, click Add to Cart, and that is going to allow you to check out and apply a discount code if you have one. If you have a discount code because your instructor or your institution has uh, purchased this book as part of your tuition fees, you're going to be able to put your discount code in right here, and then after you put in the discount code, you're going to click this link that says Update Cart. That is going to apply your discount, whether that's 50% uh, or it could be 100% if it's included with your uh, books and fees for your uh, institution. And you're next going to be able to check out either using PayPal or Google Checkout if you need to pay. Or if it's uh, zero balance because it's been paid by your institution, then you're simply going to be able to click a checkout uh, link. In that case, you have an opportunity to put in your information, and it is important you do that because that's how I can keep in touch with you when I have new versions of the book come out so that you can download those, and you're going to click this link that says Complete Free Checkout. At this point, you'll get a menu that pops up and just asks to confirm, and you're going to click OK. This is the confirmation page, and the first link that you see right here is the download link you're going to use to download that ebook into your iPad or onto your iPad. And you may have noticed I am in the Safari web browser. You probably can do this in another browser, but Safari is the browser that comes on your iPad. And you need to make sure you have the iBooks application installed and downloaded first because iBooks is what is going to open this application. Now, depending upon how long um, well, how fast your internet connection is, that will determine the length of time it's going to take to download. You're going to see the progress bar up here at the top, and this is a 177 megabyte file, and so it will take a little while to download depending on your internet connection speed. After you have successfully downloaded the book, you're going to see this menu, and you're going to want to click on this button on the right that says Open in iBooks. And again, you want to make sure you have the iBooks application open first, and you'll be doing this on an iPad 2 or newer. The folks who've been using an iPad 1, uh, for some reason, have had some difficulty with this, and so it's been better to just download it to a laptop or desktop and then synchronize with iTunes. After a little bit, you are finally going to see the book open up, and you'll be able to view the table of contents here and select any section that you want to start reading. At any time, you certainly can click up here in the upper left corner and click on the table of contents. I do recommend that you check out the tips for reading this ebook, and hopefully, that will enable you to utilize some of the different features that are unique to the iPad version of the book. While I have you here, I will real quickly show you two other websites of interest. This first one is just share.playingwithmedia.com. It includes a variety of student media examples. These include text, images, audio, and video, and you can uh, view the drop-down menus there. You can also contribute your own, and I've been having some drawings, and we'll continue to do that. It's just a great place to see examples of student work that follow with the Playing With Media book in terms of the framework of using those different kinds of media environments to share and communicate. I'd also invite you to check out my latest project, which is Mapping Media to the Curriculum or to the Common Core, if you're in a Common Core state, and that is just at maps.playingwithmedia.com. This website includes a variety of different media products that rather than being organized, they are still organized, text, audio, images, and video, but they're broken down here so you can take a look at ebooks, um, stories in five photos, narrated slideshows, and you're going to be able to view several things on this, these pages. You're going to be able to view what I call 
the workflow, uh, which is the procedures that you're going to follow to set up what you need to produce and publish this kind of work, and then also have students share it online. You're also going to be able to view tools because there are different tools that you can use to do that. And finally, you're going to be able to see examples. And these are student examples, and I would love for you to contribute and share your own. And this will certainly be, I hope, an ideal website to not only use personally, but also in different classes that you may teach that involve professional development for both pre-service as well as in-service teachers. So I hope that's been helpful. Would welcome any feedback that you have and wish you the best of luck as you are playing with media and helping your students play with media as learners in the 21st century.